Good morning and welcome. I am here in beautiful, sunny Florida in America. America. I've been here for two weeks. It's been an amazing holiday. It's also been the first time I've ever had to drive on the other side of the road in America. So I thought I would share with you lovely people some top tips of actually having to drive in America for the first time. Now, the first thing to remember is in America, most people have an automatic car. If you hire any car, it will be automatic, which does make life a hell of a lot easier. Second thing to remember in America is bigger is better. Most people will have a larger car compared to the UK. Everyone has a very small, compact car. In America, everyone seems to either have a very nice car or a big car. Another thing to remember is in America, people pretty much beep for just about anything. It might just be a hello beep. It could be anything. If someone beeps you, don't worry about it. In the UK, our beep is quite sacred. The sacred beep, not so much in America. Now, filling up the car is a bit of a pain in the backside just because they don't actually call diesel diesel. They call diesel, they call diesel fuel, which makes things a little bit more confusing. But at the end of the day, ask someone and the petrol nozzle won't actually fit in your car if it's the wrong fuel, but do just double check. Fuel is also a hell of a lot cheaper than the UK. I've got this Chevrolet here that I managed to fill up for $44, so what, around 40 quid, compared to the UK, which would have probably cost over 100. So when driving in America, the very first and hardest part for me is driving on the opposite side of the road. Because we are used to driving uh, on the right side of the car, you've got this big chunk of car on your left that you've done and probably driven for the last 10 years and you're used to that. And suddenly now you've got no big chunk of car on your left, you've got a big chunk of car on your right side. So what happens is you're constantly trying to pull the car over to the right, ending up in the, the gutter, in the ditch. And the wife or partner is constantly saying, move the car back, Josh, move the car back, Josh. And that takes a hell of a lot of focus and concentration. Now don't get me wrong, you do get used to it. it took me about two days, but I did get past it. Um, so don't panic, it does just take a bit of focus at the beginning. The next hardest part, and arguably the hardest, and that's actually the turning left. In the UK, because we're on the left side of the road, turning left is our easy turn. You know, it's making sure that it's clear, um, but really we've only got to give priority to traffic coming from the right, so it's a fairly easy turn. In America, because we're on the opposite side of the road, turning left is a hard turn. And because we're used to driving on the opposite side of the road, we keep wanting to drive straight onto the left side. So if you're not familiar with that and you're not used to it, it's a hell of a lot of focus. On the first day, my first hour of driving, I didn't almost drive up the wrong way on a dual carriageway. Was a little bit scary. Did have a little panic moment. Don't do that. Uh, leading onto that, there's a lot of dual carriageways in America. Something else that's worth mentioning, in the UK, when the lights are going from red to green, you get the amber in between to give you a bit of a heads up, get the car ready to go. In America, they don't. They just go straight instantly from red to green. So you've really got to pay attention, otherwise someone's going to beep you if you take too long. Turning left, um, make sure you just focus because that's the hardest turn. Again, after about two days, I did get used to it and the brain switched over, but up until then, just make sure you take your time and really think about it. The reason it happened is because I suddenly panicked because uh, the wife's saying that way, that way, and next thing you know, I'm almost going up the wrong way. Now, turning right in America is a hell of a lot easier than it is in the UK. And it gets even easier and stranger because even if there's a red light in America, you can still turn right, providing the road is safe to go, providing it's clear. As long as there's no traffic coming, if it's a red light, nine times out of 10, you can still go. Now there is a stop line at all of these lights. So first you must stop at the line. Anytime you see a stop sign, you've got to stop the car. Doesn't matter how ridiculous you might think it is, you've got to stop legally. Then if it's clear to go, clear and safe to turn right, you can then carry on. There are occasionally signs that say you cannot turn right on a red light. I've only seen one of those in two weeks. Obviously, if you see one of those, then don't, but otherwise it's a free for all. Amazing that this works and I don't think it would work in the UK, but it does seem to work here, so hey ho. Okay, so we've talked about turning left at crossroads, turned about turning right at crossroads. Uh, following the road ahead is just a case of when it's a green light, you can go. Same as turning left, green light, go, uh, red light, don't go. Occasionally at crossroads, if you're turning left, uh, the road ahead may also be going. 
they just work this out as uh, not taking the mick, basically, whoever is moving first, really. Now, if you're on a crossroads and there are no traffic lights, in the UK, we would normally give priority to our right side, and that's a little bit confusing when you're over here because you look at these crossroads, you think, what on earth is going on? And they regularly have four-way stop sign crossroads everywhere because they don't have any roundabouts. And the way these work here is basically whoever gets there first stops at the stop sign and then goes first. It doesn't matter what side they're from, it doesn't matter if they're straight on or if they're coming from the left or coming from the right, whoever gets there first. And if there's four cars, they will just work it out on a first come, first serve basis. It looks very confusing the first few times you think what on earth is going on, um, but you will start to realize that it works. People are sensible with it. They do just take their turn and off you go. Again, don't know if it worked very well in the UK, but it works here. As I mentioned before, there are no roundabouts at all. So lots of straight roads, lots of blocks. So just straight roads, crisscrossing uh, everywhere you go. Makes driving actually quite easy, um, if not a little bit boring. At the intersections that they call uh, between the blocks and the crossings where we would have roundabouts, they either have crossroads with traffic lights or crossroads with stop signs and no traffic lights. Most of them, especially on the main roads, they're dual carriageways with normally about three lanes, sometimes four lanes, so they will have traffic lights. Something to be aware of, there are a lot of traffic lights. You are going to need to stop a lot, and these lights don't just turn red for 30 seconds. You could be waiting there for up to five minutes on a red light, and then again, five minutes on a green light. Uh, again, the road can be 65 miles per hour. They are miles per hour in America, which I was surprised about actually. Uh, they are miles per hour in America. So you could be doing 65 miles per hour and then it goes onto a red light. So you've got to be looking ahead down the road because you've got to slow down to a stop very, very quickly, which is strange from the UK uh, because you just wouldn't get that on a dual carriageway. Now, occasionally, if you're really lucky, you may see a flashing amber light. This actually means you can go if it's safe to go. So for instance, if you were trying to turn left at a crossroads and you have a flashing amber arrow, this means you can turn left, providing it's safe to do so, basically give way, give priority to any oncoming traffic. I haven't actually talked about the lanes on dual carriageways. So as I mentioned before, lots and lots of dual carriageways. They seem to work with traffic lights. Just make sure you're looking further ahead because we're not used to having to slow down that quickly on a dual carriageway. Because in the UK, we don't often have traffic lights on 65 mile per hour roads. The lanes actually work the same as the UK, uh, where the outside is the normal driving lane and the inside is going to be overtaking lanes. But saying that, it's very, very loosely put. I don't know if anyone actually seems to follow it, but just do your best. Outside to the very right is normal driving. As you move in, overtaking, overtaking. As I say, not sure if anyone follows it, but that is the general gist. Something you do need to be aware of is the right lane on dual carriageways. Um, anytime there's a slip road leaving the dual carriageway, the right lane will normally be an exit only. So if you're not planning to get off in that exit, you may need to move across fairly quickly, but the signs normally say exit only. Uh, they're just a bit short notice, so be aware of that. The slip roads can sneak up on you very quickly as well, so keep an eye on them. Um, one second, there's no slip road, the next bomb, you're on a slip road, leaving the dual carriage rate that you needed, be aware. There's also a hell of a lot of toll roads in America. You know, in the UK where I live particularly, there's only one toll road, M6 toll. Uh, that I actually know of. We went to the Kennedy Space Center for a day trip, it took about an hour and 20 minutes to get there. And we went through around seven to 10 toll booths, at just around average one and a half dollar each, um, which is fine. They're just a pain in the backside in themselves because if you don't have one of the special sun passes, which we, we're not going to because we're not from America, you have to go through the change booths. And if you want to get change, then you've got to line up in a queue. And for some reason, some people were taking between five and 10 minutes sitting at the toll booth. So when you're having to be planning to do that, you know, eight to 10 times, it becomes a long way. So make sure you've got some quarters and then you can go through the exact change booth. They've got to be quarters, not dollar notes. And then go through the exact change booth makes life a lot quicker. Kennedy Space Center, by the way, amazing. Spoke to an actual real life astronaut. Absolutely amazing. Robert, Robert Husk, yeah, bucket list ticker. And the last thing I haven't mentioned, in America, because we've got no roundabouts and lots of dual carriageways, 
if you're going down a road and you need to turn left and perhaps you can't, perhaps there's no left turn because it's a dual carriageway, you may need to U-turn or you've missed a turn. You may need to U-turn to get back. In the UK, U-turning is pretty discouraged and um, that's what your roundabout's for. In America, U-turns are encouraged. Unless there's a sign specifying that you cannot U-turn, the sat-nav will guide you to U-turn. Don't panic about U-turning, there's nothing wrong with it provided there's no sign saying you can't do it and in fact you won't have any choice in you turning if you want to get to where you need to go okay that's pretty much my tips for driving in america now i'm just going to give you a bit of bonus info if you plan to go to america and you need to rent a car the first one when you hire a car they're going to give you third party insurance only which means you're going to need some extra cover which they're going to want to charge you quite a bit of money for in the hundreds at least if you get the extra cover while you're in the uk go on something like compare the market it doesn't matter which site you go on they're all the same and just look for extra additional uh, insurance cover if you need any more information about this just let me know in the questions below in the comments below and i'll give it you um, but yeah for around 50 quid you'll get the extra insurance which is you know fire and theft etc um, it's gonna be a hell of a lot cheaper than doing it once you get here second thing whoever is driving the car make sure that you bring a credit card in your name otherwise you're gonna end up with big problems got to bring a credit card in your name for when you hire the vehicle third one make sure you bring a driving license uh, for whoever plans to drive the car. Otherwise, again, big problemo. And the final one, of course, because it's America, some of the companies will give you a special extra tax that you will have to surprisingly pay when you get here, which could be an extra $100 airport tax or something along those lines. So don't be surprised if you've got an extra charge on top of whatever you've already paid when you get here. Had an absolutely amazing time. So anyone that wants to go to America, I would definitely advise it. Um, absolutely loved it 10 out of 10 very sad to be going home if you have any questions about driving in america or anything else please let me know in the comments below i am josh your driving instructor and i will see you all soon Boop.